Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. My name's Nathan, and for this video, I'm going to be starting a brand new tutorial series, which for some of you might be a bit familiar. This series is going to be all new videos on how to use the different Photon plugins to create multiplayer games in Unity. While my past videos on using the Photon 2 plugin are a great resource, these new videos are going to be much more concise, and we're going to cover the Photon plugins in greater detail. I also want to format the series in the same way that I'm formatting my series on how to create a first person controller in Unity. This means that for every video in this series, I'm going to provide all of the code for that video in a related post on our website. You'll also be able to look in the description below each video and find a direct link to that related post. This also means that throughout this series we're going to be developing several different multiplayer systems and features and for each completed multiplayer system I'm going to export that system as a Unity package which I will provide as a free download on our website. In other words we're going to be developing Photon add-ons that you can use in your own projects. Now the purpose of this series is not just to create these cool add-ons, but it's to provide you with all of the tools and the knowledge in order for you to be able to answer your own questions and be able to use the Photon plugins in your own way. Now with all of that said, let's get started with today's lesson. First things first, you're going to need a computer, you're going to need Unity, and you're gonna need a Unity project to work in. If you don't have Unity installed or you don't know how to create a new project, then go watch our series on the basics of Unity and then come back and watch this video. Now for this first lesson, we're going to be going over getting started with the Photon 2 plugin in Unity. So we'll be talking about how to create a Photon account. We'll also talk about how to connect your Unity project to a Photon project. And finally, we'll show you how to initialize a network connection to the Photon master servers. Once you have a new Unity project created, we first need to go to a web browser. And we're going to go to www.photonengine.com. Here you will need to register a new Photon account if you haven't already. If you already have one, then just go ahead and log in. To register, you just need to click this button here. You'll then enter in your email and confirm that you're not a robot. You'll then click register. This will send you an email where you can set up your password. Once you're logged in to your Photon account, the first thing that we need to do is create a new app or a new project. We can do this by clicking on the Create New App button. Here you'll need to fill out some information about your project, and then you'll click Create. Where it says Photon Type, we're going to use this drop-down menu to select Photon PUN. Once you've created a new Photon project, it'll take you back to the dashboard and I'm going to be using this test project that I've set up for this series. The next thing that we need to do is select this string where it says app ID and I'm going to copy this so that I can use it in a little bit. Now we can go back to Unity where we'll import the Photon plugin. To import the Photon plugin we need to open up our asset store. You can open the asset store by going to the Windows drop down menu and then select asset store. In the search bar we need to search for PUN. This will bring up a number of different options, but the option that we want to select is PUN2-free, created by Exit Games. Now for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to be using the free version of the Photon plugin. They do have paid versions, and they also have payment plans for various benefits. Now I'll leave a link in the description below this video where you can find out more information about the various pricing plans. The next thing that we need to do is download, update, and import this package. Once you click the import button, a new window will open that shows all the different assets included in this package. Now I've already imported all of these assets, and so I'm not going to do it again, but if you want to, you can uncheck the demos folder in order to save on space. But if you'd like to look at the different examples that they provide in this plugin, then I would leave the demos folder checked. You'll then want to click import. Once it's finished importing, this new window will appear, which is the PUN wizard. Here you can see that they have a field for the app ID. I'm going to click in this field and I'm going to paste in the string that we copied from earlier. I'll then click on Setup Project and here you can see that it's informing us that we've successfully linked 
our Unity project to our Photon project. Now at this point, I'd like to interject just one little thing, and that is before you download and import any of the Photon add-ons that we've created and are providing on our website, you need to do everything that we've just done beforehand. Our Photon add-ons aren't going to include the Photon plugin, and so you have to set up your project with the Photon plugin before our add-ons will work. So now that we've successfully set up our Unity project with the Photon app ID, let's establish our first network connection to the Photon master servers. For this, we'll need to create a new c -sharp script, which I've called Network Controller. Inside the script, the first thing that we need to do is include a new namespace up at the top, which is the using Photon PUN namespace. Now, the next thing that we need to do is change the class that our Network Controller is inheriting from. Originally, it was inheriting from Mono Behavior, but I've changed it to Mono Behavior PUN callbacks. Now, before we go any further, there's some information that I'd like to share with you. The first thing that I'd like to share with you is the official documentation for the Photon plugin and the official scripting API. I've included these two links in the script, and I'll also include these links in the description below this video. These links are super helpful, especially the scripting API. If you ever have a question about certain definitions or certain functions provided in the Photon plugin, you can find those functions in the scripting API. The second part of this information is an answer to one of the most common problems that people run into while using the Photon 2 plugin. The problem has to do with when trying to connect your Unity editor to a standalone build. Depending on where you live in the world, your Unity editor might connect to one region while your standalone builds might connect to a different region. Because of this, it makes it impossible for your editor to find and connect to any of your builds. If you're having this problem, all you have to do is manually set the fixed region value of your Photon server settings. The Photon server settings is a file that can be found in the Photon plugin. By manually setting the fixed region, it'll make it so that your editor and your standalone builds connect to the same region. Therefore, they can then connect to each other. Now you'll only want to set the fixed region during the development process of your game. Once you're ready to publish your game, you can then revert it back to being dynamic by setting the fixed region value to be blank. So now that we've covered that information, we can establish our first network connection. And we'll do this within the start function. The easiest way to establish a connection is by using photon network .connect using settings. This function uses the photon server settings file to establish a connection to the best master server. Now there are other ways to establish a connection to the master server, which we can find in the scripting API for the photon network class. Here you can see the function that we're using, which is the connect using settings function. There's also connect to master connect to best cloud server, and there's the connect to region function. All of these functions do basically the same thing, but require different parameters for different results. The connect using settings function is the most basic of the four. Now the next thing that we need to do within our script is create the callback function for when we successfully connect to the master server. This function is a public override void function and the name needs to be on connected to master. It needs to have the same spelling and the same capitalizations. Inside this function, I have this debug.log statement where I'm outputting this string to the console. Inside this string, I'm using the photon network.cloud region value. This will tell us exactly which region we've established a connection to. Now with all of this code, we can then save this script and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we need to create a new empty game object I've named this object network controller. We then need to select our network controller script and drag it onto this object in the inspector. After this, we can then test this project by clicking the play button. And there we go. If we open our console window, you can see that we've successfully debugged this message to the console that says we are now connected to the USW server. USW would stand for United States West which is the region that I'm connecting to. And because it gave us a result, we know that we've successfully established a network connection to the Photon Master servers. All right, there we go. We were able to set up our Unity project with the Photon plugin, and we were able to establish our first network connection to the Photon Master server. If you enjoyed this video or you found it to be informational, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, then leave them in the comments below or join our Discord server. 
And finally, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.